The world is changing at an ever-increasing uh, pace, and we all know that it's humans, us humans, individuals, that are actually making that change. And that, that is nothing new. I mean, we've already done that in the past. So that's why data are important. Uh, today, I'm going to try and talk about GRC, governance and compliance. I'm not going to talk about GDPR that much, because I believe that this is something that we all have heard a lot about and should be part of our everyday business and lives. We all have seen the old movie of this little, uh, you know, that little lady and, I mean, and, and, the, and, the, and the gossip lady that knew what was happening around at the grocery store, at the neighbor, uh, at, all the, at, at all the social events that were happening uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the area. So she was back then the social media, let's say, okay? And that has changed, that has changed a lot. Now, what we're facing is this. Perhaps, you know, looking through the virtual glass of who is doing what, looking through the data, and knowing who is doing what. And it is us that are actually willing to share the data to get something out of it. It is perhaps a product, okay? So, we have all these different companies, and their business models are based exactly on this. The fact that we, as individuals, are willing to offer our data, are willing to offer our knowledge and, 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 and capabilities, and want to know what each other is doing. But, you know, things get, can go wrong. And, okay, that's just one example of a breach that is well known in the past, and that's what happened when Cambridge Analytica came around, and then, okay, the fall. Perhaps, you know, after the testimony in a few months, the stock will go up again, who knows, probably will, because it's a huge market, but if it was another company, smaller company, that wouldn't be the case. And that's a data breach. And, and other things that we should consider also is that, you know, as pigs in the farm, they're all happy, the food is free, and they're just talking about it, saying, okay, this is nice here. But they are actually the product. They are the data. They are how the profit came about. And if they're not willing to use the product anymore, or if they're willing to withdraw, that would be an issue. Other issues we might face during, you know, again with data and GDPR and the law, is that people may start, uh, you know, hackers and, uh, and activists taking data from different companies through hacking and other means, and actually uh, asking them for ransom. Otherwise, they would issue it to the public and they, the companies can actually pay the fees. Now, what is happening here and what this previous graph shows is basically that there was a lack of proper uh, data governance, uh, technology governance, corporate governance. And that probably could be ha have been avoided if we had recognized that there is always a gap between what the organization leaders believe, the business believes, and the, what actually they do. And that's a technology gap. That's what we have identified uh, from our experience at Adacom and previous organizations, and also it is backed up by ASACA research. So cybersecurity policies, uh, defenses, are uh, perhaps, as by ASACA, the first uh, corporate technological challenge. But yet only 21% are briefed on risk topics they learn about it senior leadership at senior leadership meetings. Cybersecurity is number one governance challenge but yet just 15% increased spending on training for the board members. Risk management number two uh, in a governance challenge, but only 33% increased funds on enterprise risk management, having to see risk as a whole, including security, not just operational risk. And 64% believe internal threats are rising, but yet only 35% increase funds on data security training for their employees. Security awareness, it's just a simple thing to do. Uh, 59% say yes, they will be affected by the GDPR, but only 32 are happy about what they have been doing up to now. 
And better technology governance improves business agility and actually improves economic outcomes, the profitability of the company. But nearly only one in five have actually used a governance, a governance risk and compliance framework. Okay? So these are issues that somebody should really keep in mind and start to think about not just looking at GDPR, which, okay, more or less was there and it was an issue, but also look at the overall corporate governance of the organization, the corporate culture, having a culture to protect the data and incorporating that in an integrated frame that would bring operational risk and security at the same level, where people will be talking the same language. So making aware that the board knows what a security breach means and what are the risks around it. And perhaps, and, and I'm amazed that, you know, with Facebook, okay, that's, you know, they're a technology company and they know how important the data are for them, but nonetheless, they neglected to follow up and actually make sure that the data were deleted or whatever was the background of the story. You know, they didn't follow up and that's lack of corporate governance. So what we're suggesting here is having operational risk management, not only to include day-to-day uh, you know, -day business, internal controls and audit, which are typical things, uh, model risk for a bank or rigor risk that there may be, but also including their IT risks, security risks, data breach risks, and so forth. Having them in the same platform, talking the same language and, and recognizing what is actually more or less, let's say, important. We at Sadacom have done a lot of governance risk and compliance, a dozen of them or more in uh, different regions of the world, uh, and trying to integrate um, risks. And uh, what we have seen is that it's important to expand operational risk to include site-based security. And this is something that at the moment we're lacking. I don't think we, ha we are there. We're speaking the different language. And it is very difficult, it's not easy. Cybersecurity operational risk function need a common language. It is very important. Connect the technical aspects of cybersecurity with the people and processes that operational risk is designed to monitor and control. We need the support of top-down uh, governance. We need the support of the board of directors. They have to be involved in the process and they have to know what are the risks that they face. Technology and data are a source of risk if we see it in one way, but on the other way, it can be a source of, uh, of the solution. Because w if we manage them better, we secure them well, we know who they are and how, who has access to what, then we can actually uh, you know, improve overall security. So let's start, and that's something that has been said a lot of times, let's start thinking strategically about assets. They are our, our profit, our data. This is how we make value out of the company, and that's how we secure them. So key here, it's building an acceptable uh, data use culture, training people to know what weaknesses we have and, and how we ha have to control the data. Okay, build company norms, which is very important in every company. Have the ethics to trust, you know, to, to, to put trust on people but also enable them and actually making sure that they protect the data that they have. That is all for me today. Thank you very much.